Welcome to Eat Well, a healthy eating program of OSF Healthcare, with, supported by a grant from Illinois Critical Access Hospital Network. So today we're gonna to be cooking with cabbage. This is a really small head of cabbage. An average medium-sized head of cabbage is gonna weigh about two pounds and be about five and a half inches in diameter. So this is probably about half that size. And one of the really great things about cabbage is that it has a lot of um, vitamin K, vitamin C, and folate, as well as some other antioxidants. So there's a lot of health benefits to eating this, um, as with most vegetables. But in addition to that, this is a very economical food. If I had the same amount of, say, a head of lettuce, and the compared to the cabbage, I can get more servings out of this. So this is gonna stretch a lot farther with my family. They're gonna feel more full when they've eaten this. So today we are gonna be cooking a braised cabbage. This is a recipe that we serve in the Upper Western Region OSF cafeterias, and it's a favorite among mission partners as well as guests. So the first thing we're gonna do is chop our cabbage. I wanna talk a little bit more about the cabbage while I'm getting ready to chop it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, get my hands clean and put on some gloves for the chopping. But uh, cabbage, we really didn't, don't realize a lot of times how much vitamin C is contained in a head of cabbage. One cup serving of cabbage is gonna have about 50% of the recommended daily amount of vitamin C that a person needs. And if we were using the red or purple cabbage for this, it's gonna have about 35% more of the vitamin C. So that's 85% of what you need in a day. It's equal to what the vitamin C in one orange. So sometimes we think that we really have to have oranges to get vitamin C, but there are a lot of things that have vitamin C and cabbage is one of those. For our recipe today, we need going to wash the cabbage and then you're going to cut it up into you know kind of bite-sized pieces and we're going to steam it so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half and take out this little outside piece here So you can chop it however you want. Um, we usually leave it kind of in bigger pieces like this, but if you wanted to have it grated, you could do that as well. So we get our cabbage all cut, and then we're gonna be ready to steam this. That's really the um, first thing we wanna do. And the reason that we're steaming it rather than boiling it is it preserves all those great vitamins and minerals that are in the cabbage itself. So you can steam this in a double boiler. You could um, steam it just by putting a little bit of water in a pan with a lid on it. You could even steam it in your microwave. So however you want to steam it, that's the thing we're gonna do first. While your cabbage is steaming, you can um, cook your bacon. I actually have already cooked bacon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, break it up into my pan. If you were cooking it, you'd wanna take it out and. Um, or cook it in a separate pan so you don't have all the extra bacon fat in there. After we add our bacon, it's eight strips of bacon, then two chopped onions. So we've got our onions chopped. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little stir. And then we're gonna add two cans of diced tomatoes. So just like this, um, they don't need to be drained or anything. Now, this is a great dish year round to have braised cabbage, but especially during the summer months when you have some great um, fresh tomatoes from your garden, I brought some, I would just probably chop these myself. And two to three tomatoes the size would be equal to one of these cans. So you might need four to six tomatoes to chop up and put in there. So we're gonna give this a little stir. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit on this. Get that mixed up really well. Next, we're gonna add um, two tablespoons of minced garlic. So this was pre-minced. And if you are um, doing your own, 
usually about one clove is going to be equal to about a table a teaspoon so you're going to need several cloves to do that so it, it does have two tablespoons this really makes a large quantity enough to feed a family or um, to take to a, a dinner where you would be sharing food and then after that we're going to add some salt and pepper oops i didn't get all the garlic in there and that really adds a lot of flavor and a lot of great smells so i don't want to miss out that so we have about a fourth of a teaspoon of just black pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt now if i was someone that had high blood pressure or heart disease and i was concerned about the amount of salt i would leave this out because we are going to be adding some soy sauce and I would also use the lower sodium version of that. So for today, we're gonna to put this in. But again, um, at my house, we wouldn't be adding that extra salt. And then we need to add an eighth of a cup of soy sauce. And again, I like to use the lower sodium version. This in each tablespoon is gonna have 570 gram, milligrams of sodium. So you can see, even though it's a lower sodium product, it is not truly low, low sodium. And that's why I would leave the salt out. But again, this amount, you know, we've got like 1100 milligrams of sodium, but it's in the whole dish. So it is divided out. You're not getting that full amount because you're definitely gonna, not gonna eat the whole pan full. So we're gonna put um, an eighth of a cup of the soy sauce in there. And that does give it um, just a really nice flavor adds to the aroma that's coming off of this pan right now while things are cooking. And then we're gonna add uh, the balsamic vinegar. So you don't wanna add apple cider or white vinegar. You do wanna use the balsamic. It definitely has a different taste. And we want, I believe, um, an eighth of a cup of balsamic vinegar. So my cup is marked and I'm just gonna pour that in. And again, while this is cooking, I wanna keep stirring it to get those flavors to blend. And then we also have a fourth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So it's not a lot. If you're somebody who really enjoys spicy, you might wanna put a little more. If you don't like spice at all, you might wanna leave that out and at least until the end and see if you think it needs it. But um, a fourth of a teaspoon gives it just a little bit of that red pepper flavor without really making the dish hot. And then we're gonna let this um, go ahead and cook. We want it to boil before we add our steamed cabbage. That is gonna be the last ingredient. And once this boils, we're gonna put it in, add the cabbage, get it all stirred around, and then it's ready to serve. So the prep time, um, getting your onions chopped, getting your bacon cooked, steaming your cabbage is really what you, uh, all the, the most of the time that you're gonna put in on this recipe. Because once all that's ready, we're just gonna put it in the pan, we're gonna let it cook. There's not a lot of uh, watching that has to be done on it, and you don't have to really stir frequently. You just wanna stir it around to get those flavors to blend. Now that this is boiling, we're gonna add our cabbage that we steamed. And this is gonna be a really big pan full. I know that we had a small head of cabbage that we were uh, chopping earlier, but we really steamed a medium head. So look at all this that you have from this one recipe of a very filling, high fiber, high vitamin side dish that uh, you could serve with just about anything. But this makes a lot that can fill up your family and it's really budget friendly. So we just want to get this really mixed in good so that all this um, aromatic sauce gets the cabbage coated really well. And then once that starts bubbling again, then this is gonna be ready to serve. So we've got some tomatoes and onions and bacon and our balsamic vinegar and a little bit of soy sauce, some other spices, and just adds a lot of flavor to the cabbage. Um, Cabbage can be used uh, in soups or stews. You can, uh, of course, make slaw out of it. Um, there's a different variety of slaws. Um, cooking it is really great, especially in the fall and winter when you're looking for something warm to eat. 
this is a very satisfying and filling meal. So I think we've got this stirred up really nicely. And we're going to go ahead and dish some of this up so that we can taste it. It smells really great. So let's see. Mm. This is really good. And as part of your healthy plate, we want half our plate to be fruits and vegetables. So adding this in the vegetable column, you've got a really nice uh, healthy side dish that's going to fill your family up and help them to have a lot of energy and feel good. Thank you for joining us.